Uh, joined now by uh, Lord Derek. Kim Derek is the former UK ambassador to the United States. He's also former national security advisor in number 10. Uh, good afternoon to you, Lord Derek. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Let's talk about what is going on in the Middle East then more specifically and in terms of particularly the diplomatic efforts to try and contain this, to limit the, the conflict that's going on. Uh, Secretary of State of the United States, Anthony Blinken, has been sort of flying around the Middle East. He's going back to Israel today. Uh, he's been doing talks with Egypt about opening this Rafa crossing into Egypt for um, those with the sort of dual nationality or foreign nationalities uh, to be able to flee Gaza. What hopes do you have that international diplomacy by Brits, Americans, whoever else, will actually manage to contain this conflict? As you say, you know, Tony Blinken has been working actually tirelessly for the last few days to try and achieve two objectives, I think. One is to get the Rafa crossing uh, in the south of, of Gaza open, so perhaps just foreign nationals, but maybe um, uh, Palestinian uh, Gazan uh, refugees uh, also can, can get out of, of the danger zone. Um, and I just saw a few minutes ago uh, on the news, uh, American officials saying they are hopeful that something might happen on opening that crossing in the next few hours, although it will be for a limited opening. The other thing he's trying to do is to avoid to stop any escalation. And that means asking the Palestinian leadership in the West Bank, um, the other faction of, of Palestine, Palestinians, the, the Fatah group under, under Abbas, um, not to, to light light a bonfire in that part of, of, uh, of Israel as well as in, in Gaza. Um, he is putting pressure mostly indirectly uh, on, uh, on uh, Hezbollah not to get involved. And he's trying to enlist support from the main leading Arab countries, hence this is Saudi Arabia uh, and, uh, and Egypt and other, other countries. Look, he's doing a good job. Um, we'll know in the coming days how successful he has been. Um, I would be hopeful that we can avoid escalation because escalation really would be making a terrible, appalling situation. Well, that, but that is the big fear the right now, that this just erupts completely out of control, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, how Absolutely. long do you it's... think the Brits and the United States will be giving their sort of 100% backing to Israel if and when we do see more mass casualties, when the Israeli forces, the IDF... Everyone expects them to go in in a matter of days. They've pulled in all of their reserves, an well, army of more than 600,000, or they'll likely be having to protect the border against uh, Hezbollah mm -hmm. uh, in Lebanon in the north. But this threat of going into Gaza City, there's some reports that we could be looking at, you know, months, not, not just days yeah, or weeks, but yeah, months, yeah. trying to basically... All these, I mean, I'm absolutely fa fascinated by this, these, these tunnel networks that are being built. Oh. Um, I mean, these are very sophisticated. They've got electricity. They are maybe concrete. And they are basically, as, you know, there's as big a network as the, the London underground system. I mean, this is mm. huge. Um, that's what yeah. they're aiming to deal with, to sort of once and for all wipe that out. Um, how long, though, are, is the West going to back Israel if, we, if and when, as many fear, we, we do just see mass casualties of yeah. civilian Palestinians? Well, this is a good question, you know, and it's a really difficult decision, a really difficult bank, uh, balance to strike for the, the Israeli leadership. Look, it's legitimate for them to, given what has happened, given the appalling events of last weekend, for them to want to go into Gaza, I think, and to, uh, to capture or destroy um, Hamas uh, weaponry, uh, to knock out, to destroy Hamas command and control centers um, to take these guys on. They can't, they can't be allowed to have Gaza City as a kind of safe haven from which they can strike um, Israeli villages whenever it suits them. But as Tony Blinken has said, you know, higher standards are demanded in Israel as the only democracy in that region and others, I'm afraid. And it's very important how they do it. I think it's right for them to have uh, asked uh, the Gazan uh, civilians, uh, two million of them, uh, to leave to go south. Uh, though it's important they give enough time for everyone who wants to leave to do it. It's important the international aid agencies are there in the south and able to help the refugees that are coming south. Mm -hmm. But then, if you're actually trying to really wipe out every trace of Hamas in Gaza City, I do fear that's the job of of potentially of months, because as you said, there's an extensive 
hidden tunnel network. This is a very, very densely populated area, 2 million people living in a tiny area full of high rise blocks. You know, you'd have to go from building to building and that's going to be, uh, that's going to take a long time if that's what they are intended to do. And the risk for Israel, of course, Israel basically at the moment is getting um, a lot of international support and sympathy. Uh, you know, the attacks over the weekend were unprovoked and they were targeted, as others have said a few minutes ago, on Israeli civilians largely. I mean, machine yeah. gunning, you know, a music concert for dinner. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a lot of sympathy and support for Israel. But, but I, I wonder government. how, how long that's in, going to last. How will it be in two months' time is a good question. Exactly. I Can would I... hope that we stay solid because Israel has a right to do this, provided they operate within the rules of... Okay. Can rules I bring you back war. just finally, briefly, if you would? Um, I suppose not that briefly, really, given how big a topic it is. Uh, coming back, you're a national security advisor. Um, mm. In terms of a national security here at home, um, when you see these protests on the streets, you see people, British people, on our streets on Saturday, supporting a, a, a prescribed terrorist organisation, not just those waving the Palestinian flags um, and supporting that cause. Um, how concerned should we be in this country about people called you know, the fifth columnist, people living here, maybe born here, um, Muslim and non-Muslim, who, who basically support our enemies um, and, and, and would wish ill on us. How that's much at risk big, are we? That's a very big question, Julia. And, you know, I'm a few hours out of, a few years out of, out of the national security job, so uh, I'm not uh, the latest information. What I would say is this. First of all, people, uh, I mean, there's a long tradition we have a Palestinian uh, community in this country. There's a long tradition of British people who support the two-state solution, you know, and a state for a Palestinian state um, in the region. That's not at all the same thing as supporting Hamas. And to translate support for Palestinians into support for Hamas is profoundly, profoundly misguided. I think Hamas has done extraordinary damage to the Palestinian cause by its actions over the last last few days. And um, uh, you know, people should not be out there, I think, supporting them. And as I've said, it's a terrorist organization. So, you know, the full force of law is available. Yeah, we- the longer term question that you're putting there, you need to know on that, you know, how big a problem it is, how widespread it is, how many people we are talking about, um, and whether there are laws in place that give the police uh, uh, the yeah. authority to go and act on them. Okay. And I'm not completely up to date with that. But yeah, I agree, we, it's a legitimate concern. We shall no doubt see over the next few uh, weeks and months. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Lord Darek, the former National Security Advisor and uh, former UK Ambassador to the United States as well.